Hello, welcome to Candid Chats on Cancer. I'm Mary Robinson. I'm Jamie Moore. So Mary, who are we chatting with today? Well, I'm so excited because we have Teresa Bradley and Lori Fuchs with us today, and they're from Inner Beauty at Esterbrook Cancer Center. Wonderful. Yes. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for having Lori us. Lori and Teresa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can uh, fill us in on a little bit about what we're yeah. going to talk about today? And what your services are. That's what I kind of want to know. Yeah. Well, we see cancer patients from all over, any type of um, healthcare system, no matter where they're, they're getting treatment. So we see people from Omaha, we see people from Lincoln, Iowa, any surrounding communities. Um, Inner Beauty is part of Methodist Hospital. We're located within the Estabrook Cancer Center on 83rd and Dodge Street here in Omaha, Nebraska. And um, the great thing about our, our services and our center is that we really wanna help cancer patients look and feel beautiful about you know themselves during their cancer journey one of the things that um, is very important for us is that women look in the mirror and they don't see cancer staring back at them right. they are able to look at themselves and and uh, really have hope for their future and so that's what we do make them feel beautiful again. we may, we try to our best to make them feel beautiful absolutely I do have to put a quick plug in. Okay. When I was at the Methodist uh, Cancer Center, I actually needed some assistance, uh, and I was in isolation. And Teresa was one of the ladies that came to my room, and they mm -hmm. shaved my head, and it was a party. I'm telling you, <laughs> really? it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, and then we actually tried on some wigs. Mm -hmm. My husband said he had, you know, a date with five or the same woman <laughs> with five different wigs and styles, and it was just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And so there were no tears for me mm -hmm. and but I'm sure you do that for everybody mm -hmm. how do you get people through that you know having that the hair shaved off I mean that's got to for a, for a woman it's got to be one of the most traumatic things you have happening in your whole life absolutely well one thing that we have kind of chimed in on when they're going through their journey is when we do have to take off their hair which is not something that they expected, you know, but prior to that, they're able to learn that, okay, this is gonna be part of the journey, but something that we do tell them is this is your G.I. Jane look, and you're gonna mm -hmm. fight your way through this. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I think you got that from me, didn't you? Yeah. Because <laughs> I always said I was G.I. Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes, I did. yes, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you heard of G.I. Jane, the well, movie? You used to text me all the time. You know, okay. G. I, I'm G.I. Jane mm -hmm. in it today. Which means she was getting she her was head reshaved or doing bad. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting. So how do you turn it into a party is what I want to know. How do you make it a, a really crummy situation mm -hmm. remarkable? Mm -hmm. Try to bring out the beauty of who they are. Mm -hmm. That is so important, you know, bring it out so they don't, as Lori stated, you know, not look in the mirror and see cancer staring back at them. And when you give them the power to reach on the inside and pull that out, the rest is history. They're like, okay, I can do this. I can be a mom again. I can be a wife again. I can go to work again. They take a deep breath and they say, okay, I got this. Mm -hmm. And prior to their head shaves, you know, we, we see them, we do mm -hmm. a wig fitting, we do a consultation so they understand what is involved with hair loss. They understand that there may be sensitivity on their scalp. They understand, you know, their time frame. So let's say, uh, you know, 14 to 21 days after the first treatment, everyone normally loses hair during that time frame. And so we give them the dates that they can expect the hair loss. And so they have knowledge and you know, everyone says knowledge is power. It's very true, right. knowledge is power. It really hits fear in the face for our patients. And so when they come to us and it's time for them to have their head shaved, they already have their wig in place. It's, they have that security blanket, if you will, and they're, they're ready to go because they've, they understood, you know, okay, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, and these are the days that I can expect that hair loss to occur, and then um, they can come to us and, and bring family in. And yes, it is a very traumatic time for, for, for people, it really is. Some people breeze through it, like Mary said, she didn't really have tears mm -hmm. I didn't. during that time. But you I think a lot of women though, do. Right? Yeah, yeah, I had to be shaved twice. Yes. Um, but both times, it was just, we didn't even have time. I mean, it was just a roller coaster, like, oh, I'm all of a sudden in the hospital getting chemo. So I didn't have the time that some people might have, right. um, you know, ahead of time. And then I was losing my hair, and I decided that, you know what, it's better if I just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And for me, it wasn't traumatic, but I might not be a common 
person, you know, like that feels mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody's different. Yeah. I mean, everybody is different. Everyone has different personalities. Everyone has, you know, a different journey. They have different support systems. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think that, that it is difficult um, in different ways for each individual person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, you not only do that, you do so many things. Can you tell us about the other things that you do? We do a lot of things. A lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot. Mm -hmm. We really, uh, we have a lot of programs within the program at Inner Beauty. Uh, we, ha we do initial consultations, so we sit down with the, the newly diagnosed patient and we go over the chemotherapy drugs and so we can give them some idea of some of the possibilities that they may expect or may occur with the chemotherapy drugs they're on and um, their treatments and so then we can tell them well you can expect possibly this to happen this to happen and this to happen and again as i stated previously it, it is to hit fear in the face right. which is so important for the patients but then we, you know, we do the wig fittings. We help them with skin care, so we educate them and, and consult them on how to care for their skin. You know, skin is our large, the largest organ in our body, mm -hmm. and so chemotherapy, you know, is very hard on the skin, and we want to keep people youthful. And mm -hmm. so we give them all kinds of tips and tricks on mm -hmm. how to do that. And then uh, we we talk about makeup and you know with eyelash and our, the you know our facial expressions, um, our eyebrows, our eyelashes, you know, so those type of things we're able to educate those on people on those things. However, you know it is step by step because there's so many things that we do. We don't want to overwhelm the patient the first time they come in, so we we take step by step with them. We do mastectomy fittings for our breast cancer patients. And uh, what's what's a mastectomy fitting? Oh, a mastectomy fitting is for the breast cancer patient that has undergone um, surgery okay. for a mastectomy. So we we work with uh, prosthesis and uh, post mastectomy garments. So whether it's a lumpectomy and there's any type of symmetry issue, or whether it is a full mastectomy, double mastectomy. Uh, or a unilateral mastectomy, we are able to fit them with prosthesis and such. So we That's try to good. take all that we do and we give them back their quality of life. Yes. You know, that is the purpose behind all the services that we mm -hmm. offer. We try to take care of the whole woman, whole woman, and we do have men that come in as well, mm -hmm. you know, and so it makes it, you know, very important to let them know we can take care of yeah. you through this journey. So mm -hmm. what can you do yeah, for absolutely. us guys? I mean, because we, you know, if we lose our hair, it's no big deal. In fact, that half my friends shave their heads anyway. Um, but there is other images that we go through. Like for me, I have double colostomies. Mm, so yes. how can you help with an image, help a man that's going through cancer mm -hmm. maintain this positive image also? Well, do you mm -hmm. want to address that, my friend, mm -hmm. or do you want me to? Yes, I have had okay. a few men that we've talked to, and then a lot of them, when they have to shave off their hair, you know, they have their, a lot of times their hair has been their identity, you know, as yes. well. Mm, so we absolutely. teach them how to have scalp care, what to do in the process, and we also have male wigs available if we have to order them for them. And some go with it, and some say, no, I'm going to go without, you know, but teach them how to care for their skin, you know, and we also talk about, journaling you know we'll tell okay. them you know you can journal you know to kind of you know that's still their choice you know but it's just something that we offer just as a suggestion to help them to kind of just get their thoughts out and that's men and women not just the men but men and women that's we a have a lot idea. of hats mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know those type of things for for guys and mm -hmm. um and like teresa said haircuts teresa and emily our other staff member Emily and uh, Teresa they they do a lot of haircuts and such on uh, our Six South we have a Six South salon mm -hmm. Six South is our oncology floor okay. and so we have a beautiful little salon up there where we do head shaves and really? wash hair mm -hmm. and you know we wash the heads uh, sometimes they you know they have to wait four weeks sometimes before they can have you know their heads washed due to you know different surgeries and and those type of things so um, but these girls are up on Six South doing haircuts, and, and they have requests, men that are, you know, recurrent patients that are coming back in, and, and so that's a, that's a real blessing to be able to, to, to help anyone that we can. We, want, we don't want to forget our men, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it yeah. is kind of a girly shop <laughs> because of the mastectomy piece yeah. and all the 
pretty hats, you know, so we, we don't want to forget the guys. Yeah, we try yeah. to keep neutral colored hats for the guys, and a lot of the men will get their head shaved, and then they'll put on one of the hats, our activity caps. The and beanies. The beanies. beanies. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll say that. And you know what? This reminds me of an army hat or my marine hat or, you know, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so we try to give them a little light in their tunnel as well. And plus mm -hmm. it keeps you warm. I know that when I... I uh, got my head shaved, I did order mm -hmm. some wigs, a couple of them actually, and I was waiting for those to come and you actually had a beanie or, or some sort mm -hmm. of cap for me to wear and that mm -hmm. really helped with keeping me warm. Yeah. I'm sure it would for anybody. Yeah. And, um, and I did think that I would have been a wig person, I have to say, but once I tried it on, I was like, you know, it's hot and it's itchy and it's mm -hmm. just not for me, I'm okay. So, um, you know, I guess it's all to your own, but I was so mm -hmm. grateful for those services. Now, I was in the hospital when you guys did this, but for those that aren't, how do, is there a fee for your services? Um, how, do you, how do you go about that? Or do people just get recommended, like, to come to you? And um, mm -hmm. I know I had to purchase the wigs, but I mean, as far as somebody coming in and saying, can you check out my complexion and see if mm -hmm. you can give us makeup tips. I mean, mm -hmm. does a person have to call or? Yes, mm -hmm. we're by appointment only, but we um, absolutely, we can help anybody financially if there's, if it's a financial hardship. You know, we, we work with a lot of wonderful, generous donors to help people financially. We do um, have specialty products and wigs and such that they can purchase. Um, but we do want people to call us for appointments because we do sometimes get backed up with our, our patients. We want to have enough time marked out on the books for, you know, for that special time just to focus on them and their needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when they call to make the appointment, the appointment is complimentary. Mm -hmm. And we'll actually see them if they want to do a makeover, if they want to have their eyebrows drawn back on. And we teach them how to actually do that. And then they find out that's complimentary. They're like, you can teach us that? We're like, yes. And so. They, they just light up, you know, so we really, really like that. And then if they want to be seen for, you know, a complimentary head shave, if they want to be seen for, um, you know, just whatever they may need. You know, we have so many questions that come up that it's hard to put out all of them, but uh, the services are complimentary. But as she stated, there are mm -hmm. different items that they would have to purchase. Exactly, mm -hmm. like your makeup and whatnot. And you two look gorgeous, mm -hmm. by the way. Oh, Thank my goodness. Thank you. Thank I want you. some of that makeup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know, Jamie. I'm sorry. He's a man, but <laughs> anyway. I like my makeup on the weekends. <laughs> but that's a whole other episode. Um, one of the things, was, do we need a consultation? Or does our physician have to say that we should come to you guys? Or... Anybody watching this show can call out the Estherbrook Center and say, I want to talk to Lori or Teresa and... Absolutely, absolutely. anybody. They, we do get a lot of consultations that are referred to us. Okay. A lot of, um, you know, orders that they fax us and they say such and such needs to be seen and, and the phone number is on there. And, and so, yeah, we do call a lot of people when we get those written orders. Um, but we also have lots of doctors that refer us from any healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And so then they call, we just make an appointment with them. Which, one of the things that she said, you know, too, about our, our services, they're not just complimentary because, you know, they are actually, um, are, we have donors that donate the money so that those services are complimentary, mm -hmm. which I think is super fantastic. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. How can they donate then? Do, do you have a foundation or yes, do you have a specific do. site we you'd do. like to let everybody know well, about? Well, we have the Methodist Foundation that... Um, that you know the donations go through. We do you know do a lot of events and such that where um, people have fundraisers for us. We have some really uh, great, generous people that that yes. are really supportive of this um, of the services that we provide. We see uh, over three thousand people a year, and um, and so it is. It's something that is is really needed in the community. Mm -hmm. It really is. Very well. You know, one of the things I guess why I wanted to ask about appointments are, um, you know, even though the guys, you know, we sometimes we don't lose our hair, especially like I didn't lose my hair because I wasn't on the, the medication that caused you to lose your hair. Right. But I had no immune system pretty much towards the end. So I was afraid of getting my hair cut mm. because, you yes. know, I have a wonderful, wonderful person who cuts my hair. And she's very medically aware of what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But for guys out there, can we make an appointment with you, Teresa, and say, look, I just want to come get my hair cut because 
I know you're medically trained mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. So we can just call you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's what sets us apart from your regular boutique where someone would just kind of walk in and pick out a wig off the shelf or your regular salon where you would just walk in and say, I want a haircut. Since we're clinical cosmetologists, you know, we'll take extra measures to make sure you're taken care of and you're protected on every, every level. Mm -hmm. That's really good to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd, yeah, because it really was. I was afraid to get my hair cut towards the end mm -hmm. just because, well, if you nicked my ear, I, that mm -hmm. meant I went to the hospital. Yes, infection control is mm -hmm. a huge thing in the yeah. hospital setting, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But did you have thinning of your hair then oh, because yeah, of the drugs? Oh, yeah, definitely that it was thinning. Yes. Know, without no, yeah, without so and that would have been one of the things that we would have consulted you with. We would have told you some of the products to stay away from and some of the things that you could do to you know, with, with your hair since it's compromised from the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. What are some of the products that you would recommend uh, to us that are going through chemotherapy? Well, there's different things. Um, we always want to make sure that we're staying away from uh, products that are full of chemicals, such as sodium lauryl sulfates, your parabens. Uh, so the sulfates are chemically derived detergents. They're very hard. They're very harsh on the skin. They're very harsh on our hair. Um, the parabens are chemically derived uh, preservatives that, that are put in the products just to keep the, you know, to keep the product, you know, stable so that it's, right. you know, shelf stable. Shelf life. Yes, and so those are things we want you to get off of. We would put you on things that are a little bit more organic and gentle on the hair. We talked to you about the heat, um, you know, not taking maybe hot showers anymore and, and reducing the heat in the, in the, with showers. the water. <laughs> um, and also really, uh, you know, maybe not washing your hair every day, using heat elements on your, on your hair as, as harsh, um, keeping the ends trimmed, just things like that that you normally wouldn't think of. But products are very important um, when, you're, when you're working with compromised hair and skin as well. Yeah. I know like for me, I have problems with this area, my forehead, and it was, I've never had problems. I always had oily skin mm -hmm. throughout my whole life until I went on chemo. And so for a male, because women, you guys know, you, you come like born with the knowledge of you know, how to use face washes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Most guys, I don't know, we get up in the morning, whatever soap is there mm -hmm. is what I wash my face with. And I'm, well, I found out my face was breaking down my mm -hmm. skin was breaking down. What can we do to keep our skin healthy? Mm -hmm. And moisturized. Moisturized. Mm -hmm. I have the same problem. I have really dry skin, mm -hmm. especially since my stem cell transplant, and I really have to watch it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. any tips on dry skin would be great. Mm -hmm. We would help you with that. We have a product line, really, really hundreds of you know, different things that we can refer you to, but one of the ones that we do have is the Derm Organics. And you can do the facial cleanser, you know, the toner, the toner, the moisturizer, you know, we'll teach you all of that. And at one of your complimentary appointments, we would sit you down and actually do your face for you. Obviously, we wouldn't follow up with makeup for you like we would have for the ladies. Oh, but, we, <laughs> <laughs> but we would show you, you know, how to do that at home as a home regimen as well. And then how to keep your skin moisturized, you know, because, you know, you probably already know that. But when you're going through your chemo treatments, you want to moisturize the inside of your body with water, hydrate. Right. Then the outside, you want to do more moisture on the outside, so we would show you which products to use with the Derma Organics, Lindy Skin, you know, and the different um, lines that we carry. And then we also have the emo oil. And the emo oil is a transdermal oil, so it penetrates through the different layers of skin. And so that'll help, and it's a tissue healer. So, and it's also an anti-inflammatory, so if you're having some side effects from there the chemo, go. or, you know, your, the different treatments that you're going through, we would help you with that to teach you what to do. That yeah. sounds brilliant to me because that way the hydration that you're drinking can hydrate your cells and then you're also hydrating from the outside mm -hmm. in also? Absolutely. Okay, well. Well, I have to ask just because I do this often. I mm -hmm. tend to put coconut oil all over my body mm -hmm. because I feel like Definitely. that really moisturizes. Is mm -hmm. that something, and I get organic, mm -hmm. is that something that you recommend too? Yeah. Or? Absolutely. Oh, good. See? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right on. <laughs> yeah. So. And I will say sometimes when I put my clothing on though, because I try to put some lotion on afterwards too. I do feel like I'm a little bit oily. Yes. I don't know if there's a better way to kind of make it soak in because I got to get going in the morning. You mm -hmm. know, I don't have time to just let it soak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after after you're, you've cleansed your body in the shower, then you want to put it on your skin while it's wet. Oh, that's my problem. 
-hmm. Okay. And then you want to get out. Then okay, you're going to get out of the shower. So you're going to want to be careful of the floor because you know if you're having any. <laughs> Like yeah. You want to Use be careful mat, because everybody. yes, yeah. yes, because you know it, it gets slippery. But then you get out of the shower and then you towel dry, and that leaves a really nice moisture film on your skin. And then you can layer with another, you know, moisturizer. A, you know, a really good moisturizer, something that's not full of petroleums that's going to suffocate your skin. You want to again use something that's more on the organic line, but something that's a little heavier. Um, but you know the thing is with coconut oils, there it is a it's a fantastic hydrator, which is and it's really relatively inexpensive to it do. Yes. You always want to stick with a uh, with a raw organic uh, coconut oil, because the um, when when it's raw and organic and it's a more expensive coconut oil, the more nutrients and antioxidants are are left actually in the product, so it's not stripped of some of those healthy antioxidants and nutrients. Okay, so I, I'm not taking it off though. If I'm, I'm not taking it off if I'm wet still when I put it on. No, it just that was my fear. Yeah, it just mixes with the water and then it just it, and it's still on your skin. It just leaves a nice little, just a real light film. So it's not going to make your clothes, you know, clothing. That's nice greasy. to know. I wish yeah. I would have known that a few years ago. Every person <laughs> that walks through our door hears about coconut oil. We do carry coconut oil, but you can go to, you know, your health food store right. and find big jugs of it, you know. You can even find it on online, too, oh, absolutely. If, if, they're, if you're just not able to go shopping at Absol that time. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. just want to check the shelf life to make sure it's stable so that it doesn't, you know, because it can go rancid. So mm. our emu oil, you can do that with our emu oil as well. And our emu oil has a three year shelf life. Mm. So in the only- How do you spell emu? Is that E-M-O? E-M-U. E -M -U. Mm -hmm. Oh, like the- The emu bird. The emu bird, yeah. It does come from the emu bird, but uh, all emu oils are not created equal. Mm -hmm. So ah. ours is, is pretty fantastic in the way that they process it. And uh, like I said, it does have a three year shelf life and it is um, fabulous to um, for like your nail beds, your cuticles, and your scalp. Wonderful for radiation patients. Uh, we do a lot of prepping of uh, you know the skin for our radiation patients, especially you know if we know that a patient is is going to be undergoing a lot of chemotherapy treatments and then and then right. going to have to have radiation following their chemotherapy treatments. And so then when we prep their skin and teach them how to do so they're able to, uh, you know, get through radiation a little easier. That's mm. nice. Mm -hmm. So do you recommend the emu oil versus the coconut oil? I mean, does it matter? Emu oil is liquid gold. Mm -hmm. So your coconut oil is going to be more cost effective. Uh, you're, you want to strategically place and use the emu oil, okay. uh, especially for the radiation patient and such. But the coconut oil is kind of your everyday you know, uh, oil that you can use. In the winter time, it's great to put on raw, just right on your, you know, your little feet and uh, put socks right over the top of it. Oh, we I love do our that. oils. Yes. Do. I feel like I'm doing something right, Jamie. <laughs> I just need to switch right. the whole shower thing with the drying off. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. You're doing great. That makes perfect sense, too, because also when you're wet, isn't that your cells like more wide open after a nice warm shower, too? Yeah, so it yeah. goes into the cells better? Well, it's not. It's it's your your skin. Yeah, your skin is opened oh. up. The thing with emu oil, like Teresa said, you know, it's transdermal, mm -hmm. so it does penetrate. The pH of it is so similar, and the the make the the way it's made is very similar to how our skin is, and so our skin doesn't look at it as an invader, and okay. so that's that's a that's a beautiful thing. That's but yes, when your skin when you when you use heat on your skin, you know, it just it helps uh, you know that's penetrate nice. the layers. So the way to do it, take a shower, <laughs> do the coconut oil, mm -hmm. towel then off, off. Mm -hmm. and then take the emu oil <laughs> well, and then put that in, you know, well, in specific You could, absolutely, you could. See, mm -hmm. it's a guy oil. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You can try it. See, I guess there is stuff for us guys I after absolutely. all. Exactly. And I do right. have to say um, one more thing that I just remembered as mm -hmm. we were talking, because you were talking about mm -hmm. cuticles. You, somebody in your guys' group, yeah. I think Teresa might have done it too, you actually gave manicures. Is oh, that right? Or is that Emily? Emily? Mm -hmm. Emily. Oh yes. my gosh. Yes. And that, I tell you what, when I was in the hospital for weeks upon weeks, mm -hmm. these ladies would come there 
and give manicures. And men could do this too. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to get your nails done it, or as right. far as painted or whatnot. But that was a really nice service because I tell you what, I looked at my fingernails and I felt beautiful. Mm -hmm. I really did. So I thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. men get beat up. I mean, my cuticles and just got beat to shreds, and I didn't know what to do about them. So, what can we do outside of the hospital for cuticles? Oh, if you yeah. can kind of give us, an, you know, in a minute or less, mm -hmm. kind of give us a good idea what we can do for our cuticles. Cuticles and nails. Uh huh. That's yes. what we do. We actually teach you what to do, um, how to do, you know, the emo oil combination, if you would like, or like a tea tree oil, or even the coconut oil, and then just massage in the cuticles, and we also um, have, have a cuticle softener. And then some people, if they're having a lot of dryness, we'll have them put on little nylon gloves, you know, just kind of let the moisturizer just really seep in really good, you know, and then we can protect the nails as much as possible. God, thank you. I mean, some great advice. I wish I would have known all this and all this is going through I know. my hands. Because I did lose all my fingers and two of my toes, all my yeah. fingernails, yes, not my fingers. that's so hard and for people to Yeah, undergo. it was, and I yeah. didn't even think. Now I know, and the viewers know, to get a hold of the inner beauty, yeah. and they'll be taken care of. Yeah. Lori, Teresa, one, thank you ever so much for Thank you for, for having being us working with us cancer people and thank you ever so much for You're being so on our show. It's our pleasure. Yeah, we our really appreciate having you here. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy and we, us and again. we thank the Estabrook Cancer Center. Oh yes. Yes, thank too. you. It's a wonder their Methodist Estabrook Cancer Center is just a, a, a wonderful place. Yeah. It really is. It really is. I've been there. Mm -hmm. It's, it's been like there. family. Mm -hmm. Home yeah. away from home. It is. All right. All right. Thanks and join us again for another Candid Chats on Cancer. Be well. We'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>